Hello everybody, in this video we're going to run the main positive and negative wires for the pair of SMA inverters behind me. So here we go. The wire I picked up for this job is 2 watt. It's all copper and these are pretty big fat cables. Now it's very flexible welding wire type cable and we're going to run the 2 watt for each inverter. Each of the inverters behind me is about 6,000 watts continuous rating. Now on the 48 volt system, that means we're gonna have somewhere between 120 and 130 amps, depending on what the voltage is. So using two watt cable in such a short run is really plenty big enough for this job. We have lugs that are gonna have an Allen key style set screw, which will tighten down on the wire. Now because this is fine strand wire, meaning lots of very thin little strands, we have to use a ferrule. The ferrule will contain the strands of wire and keep them from coming apart when that screw is tightened down on them. Here's the 2 watt cable and we'll just feed both up through here. There we go, both the positive and negative. Here's the ferrule. You can see it's rather big and it's kind of funnel shaped on one side and square on the other. It's very, very thin. So I could bend this with my fingers. There's the ferrule on the end of the wire and it's containing all of the strands. I'll just get it up in there. Page 39 of the manual says these DC connections are torqued to 21 foot-pounds. two positives and two negatives in the wireway. Now I ran one of the positives up into the circuit breaker and torqued it down and it was fine. On my second wire, while I was torquing it down, I stripped out the lug and I can't pull this wire out. What I was originally planning on doing was taking three wires from the positive bus bar up into the breaker and have three outputs. Two of the outputs would go to each inverter. One of them was gonna to go to the charge controller. That way I could shut everything off, the charging and the load, the drawing, all in one shot, which would be really great. Have the BMS just control this and everything gets killed all at once. But now that this is stuck, uh, I have to decide how to fix it. Now one option is I could take everything apart. Now I gotta take out all the chase nipples uh, take the entire box off from the wall so I can get a wrench on the back side to hold the nut so I can remove the machine screws that hold the ABB breaker in place. <laughs> uh, and then I could open up the, uh, I could take out the lug that's in here. Uh, I can get at it from the back side of the brake. I could remove the lug and I could try to find a replacement. Uh, or another option is I could run the positive and negative uh, straight from these bus bars through. This would still turn on and off the battery, but not the charge controller at that point. I'd still have to find something else with the charge controller. And when I get into the wireway, I'd have to set up a positive bus bar so that I could split to each inverter and a negative bus bar for each inverter. Now the choice, which way am I going to go? And I'm not 100% sure. I think I'm going to call a friend and ask him. <laughs> now these chunks of aluminum here, this is very thick, this is quarter inch thick aluminum and these were some standoffs from a solar array that I dismantled from a roof and I could go like this and pair them up. So I'm going to put four holes and then don't forget this is going to stand off from the wire way so you could actually do two on either side like this. So in total, I could have eight connections. This side here that's all dirty, this is what's gonna actually bolt to the wireway. 
Now I have to use an isolator. So here's a piece of cutting board. This is half an inch thick cutting board. So I'm going to use that as my isolator. I'm almost there. I have the aluminum drilled out. Now there's a big hole in the back which is going to take a bolt. And these were actually the bolts that I took off the roof with these brackets. So I cleaned up the threads from some of the corrosion. And they're going to go in the back. So I want the head of this bolt to sit down flush into this cutting board. So I'm using a Fossner bit. Now Fossner bits can drill uh, flat bottom holes. And nut head are flush on there. There's probably still 3 16 of an inch uh, of plastic between that. So we're going to tighten this down and it'll clamp this piece of plastic to the aluminum and then this goes on that as my insulator. The back side is insulated so it's making no electrical connection and I sanded up the surfaces uh, and coated them that it will accept the lugs and I'm going to spray them down with some more if anybody would prefer that I replace my DIY bus bars with commercially available units, then please leave a link in the description below to bus bars that are specifically rated for 300 amps continuous, 48 volts DC minimum, and they must be UL listed for residential use. I actually found this list of requirements to be quite difficult to track down, but if you know of one, please let me know about it. Now this is a chunk of 3 aught THHN. Now it's very stiff. There's not a whole lot of strands in it. So there's a set screw. And I want the set screw to come down in the middle of that. Okay. I'll back it off a little bit. And retighten it. go. There we go. That's on there. Uh, once this comes down onto the shunt, it's going to block these two screws, and that's where the sensor needs to go, or the two wires need to go back to the inverter. So I'm going to screw those two wires on now so that they don't get in my way later. It does not come with a wire, so I just made one up. So I used a 16 gauge wire, and I put a little ring terminal on the end of two ends, and the other two ends don't have a ring terminal and I labeled both with some heat shrink so we have a red and black and we know which end is which. Now in the manual on page 55 it shows a diagram and it shows uh, positive towards the inverter and negative towards the battery. So there's the shunt hooked up uh, it's a screw terminal to these pins. It's got an adapter and it goes on this way. There's a little positive and negative symbol down there so I know it goes this direction. I've already attached the positive and I can tell which is which because I put the red and black heat shrink on this wire in advance. So I'm going to tighten this down. So I think I can just go ahead and plug this in now. I finished attaching the shunts. I use this one inch by eighth inch thick copper bar and I did put some heat shrink on it. I have two wires here for the current sensor. These go to the SMA. They go down through the wireway. So this, this 600 amp current sensor is a 75 millivolt. So it's different than this one. This is a 50 millivolt. So they have different calibration. And so this one goes up to the BMS. Get to my bus bar. Now I know it looks cruddy here, but I've cleaned up the surfaces. You can see that surface is nice and clean. 
Right now the inverter says 10 amps going into the battery. This says 40 amps going into the battery. So I asked online about the shunt because I was reading the wrong amps. And thank you to Bill for mentioning uh, that on page 73 there's a calibration. So here we go. It says here to short the battery. Um, it says here to short circuit the two current sensors. So there they are together right there on one side of the shunt. All right, now to move on to step three. All right, then it says to start the auto calibration. Start. After the calibration, the instructions say to put the wires back the way they go. So positive towards the SMA, negative towards the battery. And now we can switch it on. All right, I put a load on it. Now we've got 18.8 or 18.9 amps. And over here on the meter, 19.1. So much, much closer than it was before. Great. All right, so this Chargery BMS comes with some temperature probes. So for fun, I put one temperature probe right there in the lug and the other temperature probe I just taped to the side and that way I can compare and see how hot the lugs or the wire are getting. It will disconnect the batteries from everything else. The shunt trip that's built in has these two wire leads that come out from it and when you apply 24 volts DC across here it's supposed to trip the circuit breaker off. These other wires coming out the other side of the circuit breaker are for signal wires. So I can apply 24 volts DC here, or what I'm kind of interested in is what if you apply 48 volts, but from the source that would actually shut off. So I'm going to try this. Now I haven't done this before, so I'm gonna to touch it to the uh, bus bar inside the wireway and the other side. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> It did it, so it shut it off uh, with 48 volts, <laughs> but it was just momentarily, and now we have no more power at these two bus bars. I'll grab a multimeter so we can verify that. Uh, currently nine and a half volts, and it's drawing down. So what we're probably seeing right now is the capacitors in the inverter. So I'm gonna finish shutting this off. When I first hooked up the breaker, I did not have enough of the really thick, big wire. So I used what I had on hand, and that was some of this 2 watt. Now this did work, and some of you probably would say that because it's such, such a short run, probably would have been okay. And I never saw these things actually get hot. But I wanted to replace it with a thicker wire, which I did today, and that's a 3 watt now leading from the breaker to my bus bars. The other thing that I needed to fix was I needed to upgrade the wires that lead from the charge controller over to my bus bars. I now have two gauge copper wire for that run. To recap, we have all the positives coming to this positive bus bar and the three out wire coming around to the ABB and down to the positive bus bar inside the wireway. And then the negative side goes through the 600 amp shunt, which is for the BMS, which is the chargery BMS. Then we have a copper bar, which I joined between the two shunts. This shunt I added, and it is for the inverters. These two shunts have different calibrations, which is why I needed two of them. I put my own wires on here. The negative side comes in to the negative side of the breaker and the negative bus bar. Now the reason for the two bus bars is this is acting like your main positive negative post of the entire battery pack. This is your battery disconnect. Down here, these bus bars allow you to split off for two different inverters. So each inverter has its own wire. It also allows a point for the charge controller wire, which is this thinner one right here. This two gauge is for the charge controller. So all of that is outside the battery. So this is a battery disconnect.
We got a lot done and I would love to say that it is 100% complete, but of course it never truly is, is it? I still need to run the shunt trip wires to the BMS, but I have to do that through a relay and I'm gonna to have to double check that. I also have to calibrate the shunt for the BMS because the reading on the amps is completely off. So I'm gonna to have to run through a calibration on that so I felt bad having to jump on grid power today, especially because the batteries are full and we could have used the inverters, uh, but hey, we'll jump on them now and uh, keep on rocking the off grid. And it feels so much better using the power when we know that we've produced it on site. I mean, I just get giddy with the excitement of it. <laughs> So thank you everybody very much for watching. If you enjoy the videos, please like, subscribe, comment, share. Check out some of the links in the description below if you'd like to help support the channel. Thank you.